The Red Sox top prospect just appears to be getting better, and this season has been one of his best seasons yet. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Red Sea Radio. My name is Corbin, and I think it's pretty safe to say at this point, Roman Anthony has become the top prospect in the Red Sox system. That's not a mark to Marcel Meyer by any means. It just goes to show how good Roman Anthony has been over the last year and a half, and this year has been no different. So what we are going to do in today's video is we're going to go over just how good of a season Roman Anthony has had for the Boston Red Sox. We're going to talk to Roman Anthony himself about what he's been able to do the plate and on the field this year and we're going to talk about the possibility of seeing him in 2024 thank you all very much for clicking on this one let's get into it so this obviously isn't the first time we've talked about Roman Anthony this season. We recently, just the other day, talked about what he'd been doing in AAA so far, but what I wanted to do in this video was go over everything he's done in 2024, because putting it all together, in my opinion, might even make it more impressive than what he's doing in AAA, because he started the year at the AA level, and at that level, he had a 269 average with a 367 on base percentage and a 489 slug, good for a 142 W. RC plus about 42% above league average production during those 84 games in double a he also had 15 home runs and 20 doubles now obviously there's a bit of math here and it's not perfect but if he were to play a 162 game season and play to the level that he played in double a we're talking about the possibility of a 30 home run 40 double type season from Roman Anthony that is some pretty impressive stuff in double a now obviously he's not finishing the season in double-A as he was promoted to triple-A baseball and he flat out hit the ground running up there as well and has put up very similar numbers. He's currently slashing in 17 games, 319 with a 392 on base percentage and a 536 slug, good for a 138.9 WRC+. plus. Again, about 39% above league average production, but it also took him about a week to adjust to AAA. In his first five games, he had just a 158 average with a 158 on base percentage and a 211 slug. Since then, he is hitting 380 with a 467 on base percentage and a 660 slug good for a 188 WRC plus again just super impressive stuff from one of the most talented players in the Red Sox organization he's also getting it done on the field as well he has played every single outfield position this season to a really high level so overall I mean it's hard to argue with the fact that Roman Anthony is flat out having a ridiculous season in minor league baseball he has been making headlines basically this entire year he currently has the hardest hit ball at at any level in the Red Sox system. That includes Major League Baseball, and that also includes guys like Tristan Casas, Tyler O'Neill, and Rafael Devers. But there are two things, in my opinion, that really stand out about what Roman Anthony's been able to do this year. The first is the strikeout rate he's been able to produce in AAA, because that was sort of the biggest knock on him this season. It was, okay, yeah, the numbers are great, but there's a lot of swing and miss in his game. In fact, in AA, it was to the tune of 25.5% strikeout out rate. In AAA, he slashed that line by 10%. To me, that is a really encouraging sign that as he gets closer to Major League Baseball, making more contact is going to make that transition into Major League Baseball a whole lot easier. The other thing that really stands out this season outside of the eye-popping exit velocities, the home runs, the doubles, plays on the field, is the fact that he's also being more athletic on the base pass. Now, this isn't just him. This is a thing that the Red Sox have been trying to implement throughout their entire system, but this season, Roman Anthony has 16 stolen bases. He's being more aggressive on the base pass, and it's leading to better results on the field and more run production from the people behind him. That is a really impressive thing, again, as he gets closer towards Major League Baseball. Having guys that can impact the game in basically every way is super important, and we've seen that this year. Now, instead of trying to figure out why Roman Anthony's been having the season he's having ourselves, we're actually going to talk to him about what he's been doing this year. So, Without further ado, here is our interview with top Red Sox prospect, Roman Anthony. All right, so we're here with Roman Anthony. And Roman, you've been here a couple of weeks, and I would say you've made the transition pretty well. I mean, by all, every, literally every statistic you're killing it. What was one thing when you got promoted that you focused on coming up here that made that transition a bit easier? Uh, really wasn't trying to change anything. Um, I think just honing in on the little things here um, and just trying to help the team win. But 
you know, more of the little things than the big things, I would say, like getting out of the box, trying to put pressure on the defense, uh, being a good base runner, um, and just, you know, being flexible in the outfield, playing all three different positions, so that way, you know, wherever I need to be, I can be. Um, but yeah, that's really it, not really changing anything. Same thing that I've done all year, same routine. Um, same day-to-day -day stuff, so nothing's really changed. And I saw you taking some reps over at first base. Any thoughts? <laughs> that was just for a little <laughs> fill-in. I don't, I don't play first. I don't play the infield. I, uh, I'm good in the outfield. That's it. <laughs> and then one thing you mentioned was the stealing, right? Um, and the Red Sox have really sort of hammered home. They want you guys to be more athletic. They want you guys to steal more. How's that been for you? Are you enjoying it? Yeah, it's great. I think, like I mentioned, just putting pressure on the defense um, is huge, right? So, like, just getting out of the box, not even stealing so much. Just, you know, hitting a ground ball, getting out of the box as hard as you can, and, and really applying pressure, trying to take that extra 90, um, you know, just turning that single into a, a hustle double, or just getting out there and showing the defense that we're willing to put pressure, so that way, you know, anytime the ball's hit, they know that, that there's going to be some havoc caused on the bases. Um, so I think that's the biggest thing, not so much just like stealing bags, but obviously stealing as well. Um, but like I said, just being a good base runner, knowing who you have on the mound, knowing the times of the pitcher, um, just the little things like that are huge. Yeah, absolutely. And one thing I wanted to bring up with you was that this season you actually have the hardest hit ball at any level. I don't know if any, I don't know if you've heard that before, but I'm curious, what goes in that for you mechanically, mentally? How do you get that exit velocity at the plate that you get? Because you hit some tanks. Yeah, I think it's just uh, working hard in, in the weight room um, with the resources we have. You know, the nutrition, stand out, and on everything. You know, we have so many resources that you kind of be a fool not to. Um, and I think when you do all that and, you know, you're healthy and able to play every day, you know, stuff like that just happens. Yeah. And, you know, ran into a ball there and <laughs> haven't hit one hard like that since. But um, There have been a couple that come from. A couple, we'll but uh, that one felt pretty good. But uh, like I said, just, just staying dialed in on everything else, you know, outside of, you know, the field. Um, I think that's the biggest thing. Absolutely. Um, so you look at it from the plate, you're, you've always been a guy who's really great at using the entire field, but this year in particular, you've been going to the opposite field a bit more statistically. Is that something you've worked on or does that just come naturally this season? I think it comes naturally. I think, you know, the, the biggest thing for me is just always trying to be a hitter first um, and, and not just pulling the ball or not just going oppo. Or I think, you know, hitting for me can't be one dimensional. Um, so like I said, just just as you know, growing up as a kid, I was always taught to be a pure hitter and use all fields and take advantage of the opposite field. And I think as you go up and, and you know guys are going away or, or going in or they don't miss as much, I think it's super important to be able to you know hit the ball where it's pitched and yeah. not like I said, just be one dimensional. That um, makes a lot of sense. So that's that's helped me a lot. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, one thing I did want to talk about too was your defense because I feel like a lot of people focus on the hitting, which rightfully so, but you're a great defender as well. What do you think in your mind is the most important aspect of being a really solid outfielder? Yeah, like I mentioned, just the little things like, um, you know, the pre-pitch routine, uh, being dialed in on every single pitch for nine innings, you know, it can be tough sometimes. Um, but I think just putting emphasis on, on being ready every single pitch, no matter what, um, no matter what that takes, whether that's, you know, just being able to move or taking that little pre-pitch step that we emphasize here a lot. Um, and then again, just, just being able to play every single position. Like, you know, two days ago, I was in, or three days ago, I was in center. Yesterday, I was in left. Today, I'm in right. So I think just being versatile uh, and being able to go wherever they need me to play, I think that's huge. Um, and getting reps all over the outfield. So I think that's for me, has helped me, you know, see all the different angles of, of the ball and the trajectory of the ball and, and just become better wherever I'm at. You mentioned versatility. Is Do you have a favorite position? Are you just like, hey man, throw me out there, I'm good. I think I've played the most center. Yeah. Um, and, and the ball spins pretty true to center. Yeah. Um, but honestly, I've, I've played a lot of left recently and I've played a little bit of right. So I'm honestly learning to love every single one of them. Obviously, it's, it's a little bit different of a setup here and in Fenway with the wall on right here, the wall on Fenway and left. So I think just, and even at the lower affiliates um, yeah. in Portland, playing some left field, getting used to that wall. I think that's huge. So that way, you know, when the time comes, if it's in left, I don't want to play the wall in left. If it's in right, it's, you'll know how to get there. Yeah, I know how to get around that that pole and that right field, and then in center and same same build that I've gone through in, in high and double A. Um, but I think just playing at all these different fields that we go to and getting used to all the different dimensions, knowing the walls, knowing things like that, um, and just being aware of, of where you are and how the ball plays at certain fields is, is the biggest thing. And, and 
like I mentioned, the more I get reps in, in each of those positions, the more I feel comfortable. That makes a lot of sense. So no specific favorite position. You just like being out there, all the different angles and everything. I guess we'll go with center for go now. Center. Just with it the most, but sure. I'm, I'm learning to like all of them. That makes sense. Um, and then finally, just three quick rapid fire questions for you. David Ortiz or Ted Williams? I have to go David Ortiz. I never really saw Ted Williams it's fair. too much. And then David Ortiz was a guy that I really, you know, really power hitting lefty that I liked when I was younger. And I've met David Ortiz, so I'll go with David Ortiz. All right, good points. Uh, would you rather have a three home run game at the big league level or hit for the cycle in a postseason, which has only been done once by Brock Holt? Hit for the cycle in a postseason game. Yeah, it'd be pretty cool. Brock would that, be pretty upset. That means we're in the postseason, and <laughs> <True>. <laughs> hitting for the cycle is pretty cool. I almost did it the other night and didn't didn't finish it, but uh, I'd like to get that one off off my. Not that I've hit three home runs in a game either, but <laughs> I'd have to go with the uh, cycle in the postseason. Fair enough. And then finally, would you rather the best contact ability in baseball or the best power ability in baseball? You keep all the rest of your statistics. These just stay. These just the ones that move. I guess I'd have to go with with contact. I feel like I have you know enough power, and as I've continued to get older and stronger um, the power continues to add on more and more so I trust myself in the weight room that I'll get stronger and add more power but I think you know having that that contact and being able to just kind of put the ball bat on the ball whenever you want is uh, you know not many people have it so I think I'd go with that for sure yeah right I think that's kind of fair with your skill set man all right I appreciate it thanks Okay, obviously a massive shout out to Roman Anthony for taking a second and talking to us. He was an absolutely fantastic guy to talk to both on and off camera. And I think one thing to me that really stood out about his interview was just simply how much he cares about the game of baseball. His answers kind of reminded me of Tristan Casas's when we talked to him, not so much in terms of personality, but in terms of the fact that he just simply lives, breathes, and dies baseball every single day. And you could tell this is what he loves to do. And obviously that that is hugely important as he gets closer towards Major League Baseball. Being so proud of your craft, being so focused on being better every single day is going to continue to make him one of the better players in the Red Sox system. And speaking of getting towards Major League Baseball, as promised, let's talk about whether or not we'll see him in 2024 a little bit. I do think there is a small possibility. I think it's more than likely that we probably won't see him until 2025. And I would guess probably vying for a starting role or a role on this team team coming into spring training type stuff in 2025, but if the Red Sox keep playing the way they're playing, a three-game losing streak right now, watching their season slip away in terms of postseason hopes, by the time we get to the last couple weeks in September, if Roman Anthony can continue to play the way that he's playing right now, I don't really see the problem with giving him a cup of coffee in Major League Baseball before the season ends. Now, obviously, there are things like trying to have him rookie eligible next year to have an extra year of arbitration. And on top of that, because he's a top 100 prospect, having him rookie eligible for 2025 would allow the Red Sox a possibility of getting an extra draft pick if he were to win rookie of the year. But if he were to come up at the end of 2024 for the last two weeks, let's say, just to sort of get him to his feet wet at the major league level. It's not going to do either one of those. It's not going to ruin his rookie eligibility to the point where they're going to lose a year of arbitration. It's not going to allow them to miss out on the possibility of getting an extra draft pick because going into 25, that'll technically be his true rookie season. So in my opinion, there is a possibility we see him at the major league level this year. I, I would put the possibility now that the Red Sox are sort of fumbling the bag at the major league level at about 5%. It's not a very large percentage chance, but it is there, especially if he can continue to play the way he's playing. And I have no doubt he's going to continue to play the way he's playing. But even if he doesn't end up at the major league level this season, what we've been seeing from Roman Anthony over the last couple of years should get you absolutely ecstatic about who this guy could be. I think there's a legitimate possibility coming into 2025 that he is a top 10 prospect in Major League Baseball. His stuff has just simply been that good this year. And again, it has been an absolutely incredible whirlwind type season from Roman Anthony once again in this Red Sox system. So let me know in the comment section down below. What do you think? What did you think about Roman Anthony's answers and approach to this season? What do you think about what he's done this year? And how do you think that's going to impact the Red 
Red Sox coming into 2025. As always, if you made it to the end of this video, do me a favor. Make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you're new here, we talk Red Sox content almost every single day. Also, make sure you guys have hit the like button on this video as well. Just helps these videos out a ton. It's the best way to let me know you're enjoying the content. Don't forget, if you want to listen to these episodes instead of watch them, all you got to do is head over to your favorite podcasting app and look up Red Sea Radio. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one, and I will see you in the red seats.